I'm now recording. Fair enough. <clears throat> so, that is that then. All right, well, that's done. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for listening to the podcast, everyone. It was, uh, it was lovely having you. It was great. Uh, all, all, of, all of the three views, and by that, I obviously mean us three. <laughs> hey, I'll watch it more than once. <laughs> <laughs> On all of your accounts. Uh, yeah, ex- exa- exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Anyways, welcome to... What did we agree on the name, actually? It was two Welshmen and an Englishman walk into a tavern, right? Something like that. I it, don't remember. I think <laughs> perfectly sums up our conversations in general and some of the stuff we're going to talk about. And our lives, because, you know, they're all a joke. Yeah, for that as well, yep. All a joke with a little bit of alcohol. Yep. Thrown in. So I'm just looking through our chat um, just to have a look, but Huge recovery. it is what it is. So anyway, let's actually focus. So um, this podcast for anybody who does watch it, I don't know why, I don't know who you are, but thanks, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm very unlikely. Um, <laughs> my conversation with these two, so me, Revac, we've got Rooster. Here as well, and we've got Leechy. Um, wh- whenever we have kind of a conversation, I think we all laugh a lot when we yes. talk to each other. We've got similar personalities. We think we're hilarious. Yeah, viewers may disagree. Well, a com- comedy's a thing Subjective. of opinion. Thank you. That's the one. <laughs> so it is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it would be good to one get together, talk, and let people just in on our conversations, but also. I drive 45 minutes to and from work every day. I want someone to listen at, and let's face it, I like the sound of my own voice. That, <laughs> you're going to understand <laughs> that that is As something. As does you know. any streamer, YouTuber, any content creator <laughs> in existence. Pretty much, yeah. So, <laughs> this, this podcast is going to be a lot of talking about games. We may throw in some Dungeons & Dragons stuff, because there are, me boy. and Rooster have DM'd. I believe you've DM'd. Yes, yeah. I DM. I'm fresh, but I DM. I'm a fresh DM as well. Um, but tips, you know, what maybe the party had got on, depending on what had happened. But then anything else that goes on in the world. So like any new technical advances, a good example of that would be the Tesla pickup truck. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. The Warthog, um, yeah. as it should only ever be really named, because I'm pretty sure he based it off of the Halo Warthog. One hundred percent did, but that's that's I it. Mean, so so yeah. Let's so. let's not forget the fact. Do you know that... uh Oh, go. Cool. So you know how the center screens of Tesla's can play video games. Yeah. Uh, Stargy Valley has been confirmed as a uh, as one of the <laughs> in- board games. <laughs> nice. Surely that's got to be disabled if you're driving. Yeah, uh, they can't be played while driving. Yeah. Um. They can only be played if the vehicle is stationary. Um, With the handbrake on, I believe. Yeah. If the vehicle starts to move, well, it won't. It won't yeah. let the vehicle move if the game is running, uh, which is good. Well, that's what they used to do with the old TVs in the cars as well. Remember the small... Yeah. Why would you ever watch that in yeah. a car? I never know, but um, it was a very small screen and you could watch live TV. I'm pretty sure it was like 10 channels, but... Great. I can now watch BBC One <laughs> when I'm stationary in my car. Thank God. <laughs> mm, I'm in Britain. Let me just uh, check up on the knife crime. Oh, would you look at that? That one's happening around the corner. Best get out of here. <laughs> check, uh, check BBC News. Handbrake's just down. It's like, I'm out. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. So uh, I think if we start off with what we've all kind of been playing over the last couple of weeks anything like that is there anything anybody has played that they particularly enjoyed what have you been playing rooster <laughs> too so, much diablo uh, so <laughs> as a ex path of exile uh, player um who never actually played diablo in the past finally decided to give diablo 3 a go and uh because i see do. what it was like yeah because you did <laughs> and so uh, you're to blame <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So I've heard a lot of complaints about Diablo 3 from the primary Diablo community. Um, not necessarily that it's a bad game, but not as good as previous entries, so to speak. It took a bit more of a lighter tone. So I just sort of stayed clear of it, which was a, a mistake. Because uh, since coming into Diablo 3 after the Diablo 4 announcement and looking at that, it just it really piqued my interest. So I thought, oh, go on, I better give it a go. And uh, yeah, I've I've played a lot of Diablo 3 yesterday. Um, so it's safe to say that I enjoy the game. Uh, it's definitely a game worth playing. Um, <laughs> I've played far too much of it. And uh, probably an unpopular opinion, but I honestly prefer it to Path of Exile. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of people will disagree with that because a lot of the Diablo community uh, moved over to Path of Exile after Diablo 3. But uh, I, I prefer its uh, sort of simplicity uh, and attention to detail. Um, but I feel that they are very enjoyable for very different reasons, to be fair. I can enjoy both of them, but yeah, I've uh, really been hooked on Diablo 3 the past couple of days. Okay, so incoming a wave of dislikes on the video mm -hmm. on YouTube. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Oh god, yeah. Like I said, when I say unpopular opinion, I mean who's that rooster guy in the videos? Get rid of him, Revac. He's a twat. <laughs> <laughs> you probably uh... should... <laughs> well, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's an opinion. It's a so... bad one, but yes. Uh, opinion's an opinion. <laughs> if you prefer... I've never played any of them personally. I, they're not they're not my kind of um, gameplay. Really. Yeah, that's I, fair. I, it's, a, it's a very unique it sort of game. It went for me for a long time. It's why I, 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 I haven't played Diablo 1 or 2. Like, 3 is the first Diablo game I've played. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's what kind of helps with the enjoyment of it. Because I feel like Diablo 3 primarily suffers from uh, what I've dubbed uh, Dark Souls 2 Syndrome. <laughs> Fantastic game. Worse than the series. And so, in comparison, everyone says it's shit. It's like Dark, Dark, Soul, Dark Souls 2 is Dark Souls. a... Yeah, it, it, Dark Souls 2 is a 95 out of 100 game. But all the others are like 98s and 99s. And uh, Sekiro Best, yes. And, and so, people act like Dark Souls 2 is a, a, a terrible, terrible game. And while far from the best Dark Souls, uh, it's not a bad game. It's a good game, but... Uh, just gets heavily outshadowed by other entries of the series. I think I started with um, Dark Souls 2. A lot of people did, yeah. funnily enough. It was, I really enjoyed it. I, it wasn't that long ago, I think it was a couple of months ago now, that I completed Dark Souls 3 for the first time, which I threw myself into that game. I really enjoyed that game. <laughs> I've beaten Dark the Souls third one too many times. The first one I played, and it was the, uh, the only Dark Souls out at the time. Uh, my brother bought it, not really understanding the kind of game that it was. Hmm. And as such, neither did I. Uh, so I attempted it, played it for about an hour and a half, maybe, and was like, yeah, no, the, this game is like hot garbage. Um, honestly, didn't really return to the series until Dark Souls 3. And then I learned to get good, and that every death was my <laughs> own fault. After I, <laughs> pest after I pestered you for so long. You pestered me to get fucking Dark Souls 1 and then the remaster was announced. Oh, yeah, that's not my fault. That's their fault. <laughs> uh, Dark Souls 3. It, here's a, uh, a sad, painful, painful story. So uh, I had about 250 hours on my Dark Souls 3 character. <laughs> uh, beating the game. Uh, a couple of new pluses. So, you know, I had almost... Almost all of the items had been like slowly acquired and things like that. And so I was really happy with this character until the day that I formatted. And as as I'm reaching Windows for the first time, I just sort of sat there in pure disbelief as I realized I never backed up my Dark Souls save. And the third one <laughs> does not have Steam Cloud support. I wanted to cry. I lost a 250-hour character, and I wanted to cry. <laughs> and then... I did a lot uh, of laughing at him until it happened to me like two weeks later. Yep. <laughs> I remember. I remember that, All actually. the jokes. All the jokes. Any any time we were talking, it'd always come back to, oh, yeah, but don't don't forget to back up your Dark Souls. Oh, wait. 
you did. And then two weeks later, he did the exact same thing after ridiculing me for two weeks straight. And it was I, the I, most I, glorious karma I, I have ever I, I went, I in my life. The, uh, I once did it with a folder full of porn. I forgot to back it up and then format it. <laughs> Bad Lovely. times. So this is going to have to have a uh, an adults only warning. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to listen back and think of what the title uh, could be. I I, I introduce uh, Lishi to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's there's a lot of different things that I'm now worrying about. Oh, um, don't worry. Almost Diablo every three better than uh, Path of Exile. And oh God, no! I accidentally that, that, did that to I a mean... porn folder. <laughs> That, I think that that's something is, everyone can relate to. That is the most clickbaity title ever, but also entirely accurate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do we get viewers? Clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. <laughs> mm. yes, There's no such thing as bad publicity. You, you do realise that you're going to have to have a thumbnail of like uh, a picture of Diablo 3, uh, a homework folder, um, Maybe our pictures and lots of okay. arrows and circles, circling things with oh my, with title oh my god, you're never gonna believe this. Guess who thinks Diablo three is better than, and so on and so forth. <laughs> and there you go, YouTube algorithm, right in the money. Mate, we've got this. This this cannot go wrong. <laughs> this, this business is easy. I don't know what the community complains about. <laughs> uh... He says optimistically before it's ever uploaded. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, we just got to wait and see now. Um, now. Now it's a bit leech where we make Revac an absolute mint and he just vanishes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, get, we get nothing from it and he's just gone. And every, every couple of months you see a new podcast video come out and it's always new crowds because he just keeps doing it. He makes a couple of new <laughs> friends, makes the podcast and Shit, vamoosh, I'm, he's I'm, gone. I'm, I need to burn that paper off my notes. You know, that little <laughs> sentence that I said that in, just in case you ever take me to court. I mean, what? <laughs> anyway, let's move on quickly before all of my master plans start to unveil. Uh, Leechy, yeah. anything in particular that you've played that you want to discuss? Uh, I mean, not really. I've been playing more of the same. I, I recently got into Diablo as well, but... Like, haven't played it anywhere near as much as uh, Rooster has, apparently. <laughs> um, been playing Siege again lately. That's actually been pretty fun. That's, yeah. a, fair, yeah, that's a fair point. Rainbow Six Siege but, is a... Honestly, really... it feels like, for once, that their servers are in a pretty good place. Um, normally, the, the norm for Siege is, you know, oh, I shot that guy. But no, I never. He's like three miles behind cover and he's, he's domed you instead. Uh, just because bad networking. Uh, well, the funny thing about it, man, like that, that like. lately actually hasn't happened, and I think it's down to the fact that a few, uh, I'd say months now, I guess, I was going to say weeks, but yeah, it's been months, uh, Siege was getting DDoS, like, constantly, so they decided in a in a attempt to mitigate the impact of the, the DDoSing that was going on, they decided to go from three games per server to only one game per server, I think it was. Uh, and as far as I know, that has stayed. It's still only one game per server now. And yeah, it's, it's so much fucking better. Like the server's just actually, the servers can handle one game. <laughs> they can't handle three. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's consistency I, 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 the game is just much we, better. We also, we keep, getting, uh, we keep getting enemy teams that think we're smurfing because I'm chilling at plat three at the minute. Barely, to be honest. I'm, I'm like... Uh, and the last couple of games, I've just been hardcore carried by the rest of the team. Like, I'm playing bad at the moment. Um, but yeah, because I'm a plat three, we keep getting people claiming that, like, you know, I'm boosting uh, the other guys are smurfing because, like, Stokesy I... is genuinely a silver. Um, but he oh, managed that's... to kill a guy this one time. And the dude <laughs> rage quit. The oh, dude actually rage glorious. quit. Because, oh my god, another smurf. Stokesy is legitimately a silver. He's not a smurf. Yeah. Like, he had one lucky shot. This guy, bear in mind, he had killed Leechy uh, and, 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 and typed good night. He then killed me and typed good night. Now, bear in mind, me and Leechy are the two people with the most experience because we've played Siege pretty much since it released. We took a long break and haven't played it for 
over an in, over a season now, but you know we've still got a lot of hours in the game from in the early days. Whereas the rest of the people we're playing with are new to the game; they do not have that many hours. So he took out the most experienced members of the of the team right off the get go. Typed good night in the chat to both of them, then gets killed by Stokesy because Stokesy just I don't know, did well for once and immediately <laughs> just typed, Oh my god, another Smurf, I'm fucking done and disconnected from the match. Nice. In rank. This was in ranked. It was glorious. <laughs> just imagine yeah. being that salty. Well, I mean, I've seen it loads of times before. I remember I regularly used to play League of Legends. That is nothing <laughs> oh, but smirks, it's just rage, everything like that. So I'm used to that kind of stuff. <laughs> and remember, we used to play a lot of CSGO together. That's how we first kind of met uh, yes. way back when. And that's just Smurf City. Uh, good old days of pain and torment. Pain and <laughs> torment. <laughs> Another good name for the uh, for the episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, we've got one of them today. Yeah. God, that that was about three years ago, wasn't it? Three, four years ago now. Must have been. Yeah. It was a long ass time, time ago. Yeah. None of us really play CS anymore. I mean, I I jump on every once in a while and and dabble, but I think um, what's his face is the only one that plays it now. Um. Relapse. I think Relapse is the only person that really <laughs> goes on there and regularly regularly plays because he's actually still quite good. I remember playing with him a couple of months ago, and I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, he's still a pretty good player. Yeah. And I've of course gotten a lot worse because I've not played it in about a year. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yep. Yeah. And then immediately rage quit. <laughs> the so I was just like, no, I'm done with this. It's the age just getting to us. We're starting to reach that point where the reaction times. It's just getting no, slower. No, do not. Don't, <laughs> I was no. thinking about this today, right? And uh, like this year for me, like just 2019, just absolutely stormed on by. Like I don't know where it went. It's just come yeah, and it's gone. Too. And okay, boomer. And now an entire fucking you know decades about to go. <laughs> the decades. More and more um, yeah, the the decade for me yeah, is not it, disappeared. It it, it dawned on me right that uh so. Obviously, this year has absolutely flown by. Yeah. Uh, next year, it's probably going to absolutely fly by. Yeah. Fuck 26 next year. I just can't be re- like, can't be Stop. realizing just how close to 30 I am. And Stop it. Uh, just, just, just oh, remember, yeah. just remember, Leech, you're halfway to 50. Shut I up. I know, man. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I don't want to. Just, just. I don't want to hear let it. that sink in. Halfway to 50. Let that sink in. I really regret asking you guys to about. I actually, I yeah, uh, sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned, I mentioned anyway in work that I was 25 or whatever, just as part of that same kind of conversation. And uh, the 28 year old goes, "Ah, oh, I thought you were older than me. <laughs> You're fucking joking. <laughs> That's fucking hey, rude. <laughs> you must look rough. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> You're just intelligent." That's that's all it is. You mature for my age. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the one. You mature for your age. You've got a good intelligence. At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> I mean, oh, you're about thirty three, aren't you? Are you taking the piss? I'm twenty five. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I was having a. Oh, go on. No, I'm just mocking you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. That's the most important part of this podcast. Yeah, of Mock away. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> uh, any, anything else then from either of you? I mean, Halo. Pretty big one to talk oh, about. Oh, yeah. Halo, Halo. PC, Halo Reach. How has that been That's, going? Uh, enjoyable. No, D- Dice need to fix their TTK. Fix the damn game. Oh, okay. Battlefield Fair 5 enough. sucks now. Ah, uh, yeah. The, the ruining of Battlefield 5. That's a depressing topic. It's but... actually not that bad, but yeah, it was nice. better. Before. Could it could easily be worse? Uh, but uh, I I think just personally, I was feeling like it was in a really good place and like it was really on track. And uh, you know, they just needed to tweak a few minor things, and then they just come out with this like huge update of like the TTK is just completely changing. And I'm just like, dice, no, no dice. There's really no one asked for this. Not not now. 
I love your game, but at the same time, it's sort of a uh, catch twenty two because a lot of people love the TTK changes, and you can't can't please the entirety of your community. So, very true. You I'd see. say a bigger part hates it, but then there's there's the problem. It's always a louder minority, and are we this time around, Leech, part of the louder minority? Because I usually feel that I'm not. I usually, in a lot of the games, I'm usually one of the people who's happy with changes. Uh, there's a lot of people, or what seems like a lot of people on the internet, complaining about something and get to change, and then even more people complain when it is changed. And it's that's because it turned out that the majority of people enjoyed the change and played the game. They didn't go cry on the internet. Uh, so it's always nah. hard hard to gauge. The only ones enjoying it are the ones who didn't get affected by it. Bolt actions and uh, semi-auto rifles didn't change. Ah, uh, right, fair enough. And, like, I, I was in game, and uh, see, the main thing for me is not even the fact that the TTK has changed, because you can still kill people quickly enough that it, it's fun. And, to be fair, with the new system, you are given a bit more time to react if somebody does catch you off guard. So they had it happen. Someone shot me first. I basically 180, then I like, blew him away with a shotgun in one hit. So it was kind of brutal. Um, but uh, what it has caused is being able to like one man flank a large portion of the enemy team, which has been a staple of the game for years. Yeah. Um, that's less effective. Like, almost to the point that it ain't effective. Um, and what it's causing is people to just zerg around the map like they did in Battlefield 1. And so now you get the entire team, basically, all running together from point to point to point. Um, the enemy team's doing exactly the same thing. So quite often, you actually miss each other entirely. And you can have, like, full matches with barely any fighting going on because your team's running up the left side of the map, their team's running up their left side of the map, and you're just constantly doing a big circle. And it's just completely changed how the actual game plays out. The the gunfights themselves aren't that bad. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, it's not as lethal as it was. Um, which I like the lethality of it. Um, but it's not the end of the world. But it's the fact that the way everyone is playing to try and compensate for the lower lethality is what's butchering the game more than anything. So in one sense, like... Okay, dice calls the problem. I'm not. They're not getting away with it that easy. But the community are definitely making it worse by, like, changing how they're playing to try and compensate for oh, oh the TTK. Like, yeah, yeah, it sucks. The TTK now sucks. But running around the entire map as one large group from point to point to point to point to point without actually ever meeting the enemy team because they're doing exactly the same thing, that just sucks. And the only people that aren't being affected by it, because I, I had a little bitch about it in the game chat one time. Um, and the only people in the chat that were like, I don't see the problem, were the guys who were sat at the back with their shitty little bolt, bolt action snipers trying to nail people from as far a range as possible. But they're the weapons that didn't change. The bolt actions weren't balanced. So they're just as effective as they always were. If not more effective now, because... Um, objectively, the other weapons are worse. But I think if people went back to just playing how they would have played before, with like, you know, maybe squads running together, not entire teams. Yeah, um, it could still be a very enjoyable game. Yeah, like I've still had a lot of fun playing Battlefield Five over the last couple of days, but the just the gun, the raw gunplay isn't as enjoyable as it was. But yeah, pe people are definitely the bigger problem, I think, in the sense that, you know, that's how they feel the need to, to counter the TTK changes. Oh, we be you know, we all better just zerg around the map now. And there's just not as much, I guess, intensity is the, it's the best word for it. Like, there's not, the game no longer feels like you're part of this grander war that you're, you're all, you know, running around, you're on your, having your, your little battles that add up to something bigger in, in the match. But now it's just, you all run round. You might fight over a flag with the other team for a little bit, but eventually someone will win that fight. And then you'll just go back to rushing between points again. 
You know, there's but because the the gunplay is weaker now, it's just it's not it, that feeling of intensity and like your your soldier's life can actually mean something. It's just kind of gone. Yeah. And I, I don't get why they changed it. Like literally, no one was complaining about the TTK as it was. But you know, all people wanted was more content and bug fixes. And they come out and they smash us with the the, uh, the Pacific Theater, and it was peak. Like the game was at its best place it had ever been. And they were finally onto something golden. And then they go, oh yeah, but they, here's what we're changing that no one asked for. <laughs> and and it was proven that nobody bloody bonded it the first time they attempted it. Yeah. Oh yeah, they did change it mm-hmm. earlier in the uh, game's development. And... After yeah, it release, was changed they, yeah. straight up. Yeah, it was changed a couple of months after release. Uh, I think, honestly, I think it was changed early on in its release to try and appease the Christmas noobs. And they've done it again. They, they've they've now seen that, okay, the game is not dead because the Pacific content basically saved it. So let's lower the skill ceiling so that uh, the Christmas noobs can get on board. But all the Christmas noobs are getting cod and fucking fork knife bundles and you know <laughs> people aren't getting battlefield 5 for christmas at this point no definitely not 100 percent not i, so I think i kind of missed be. the trick a little bit to be honest well remember they are a subsidiary of ea yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah, there's, there's the all you're complaining <laughs> over the last five minutes i've just pretty much rounded it off with one sentence <laughs> <laughs> yep and very accurately done so uh, it's, it's a subsidiary yeah, of EA. Trying to, yeah, EA is obviously trying to get some of their money back that has gone down the shitter with the incredibly poor marketing that Battlefield Five had. And so the only way they feel the need to do that is rather than put in some genuine hard work of making the game what it should have been and drawing people in with the actual fucking good points of the game, oh, let's just lower the skill ceiling so kids feel better at the game. Ah, the, ga- the gaming sort of uh, business model at the moment. Mm. Yeah. Apart from uh, a few shining shining stars in the gaming community at the moment. Such as? Squad. Not Bethesda. Not, Not Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> Leave Bethesda alone. I mean, to be fair, Bethesda themselves haven't put themselves in the spotlight oh, they... very well. It just no, works. Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh um, no! Let's face it. Uh, we'll no, Todd, quickly no. move on. <laughs> I, I mean, with so like Fallout Four, I've never been that much of a big fan of Fallout. I enjoy the games, but they're no Elder Scrolls. I mean, Elder yeah. Scrolls is there. Well, best the problem is, is you've release. got you've all Bethesda fans. You've got the uh, I like both, but I like. And there's both. always the one or the two. There's, there's always the one out of two. I mean, uh, that someone really loves you've either got people who enjoy elder scrolls yeah. but love fallout or enjoy fallout but love elder scrolls i'm i'm elder scrolls camp I, personally. I'm, yeah i'm elder scrolls camp as well i enjoy fallout but i find it, it's gonna sound really weird but i find it really hard to get immersed into a fallout world more than i do an elder scrolls world i mean what's more yes. likely anyway a nuclear holocaust or dragons <laughs> it don't matter yeah, yeah, <laughs> i mean when you put it that way i mean naturally yep it's just i, I can i can really see myself being the dragonborn <laughs> the, uh, no, very... i've lived it i uh, like <laughs> but um but yeah bethesda recently i think i think fallout 4 was um quite a downward spiral for them personally yeah the the game was it was good can i just say something yeah. Well, another settlement needs your help. <laughs> oh, really? Do not it. mark that on my map. <laughs> it, yeah, it. They did well with it, but I think they focus on the wrong elements, like the whole base building piece. It was good, but I think they put a lot of work and resources into that, and maybe didn't focus too much on the story because the endings doesn't matter which one you have, they just feel really mundane yeah they just lack that kind of sense of achievement and it's the yeah the endings weren't too great the gameplay was good but i i don't know i think they really hit their peak at skyrim 
personally. Elder Scrolls Online was good, but it it kind of tanked because people were expecting something that yeah, I think they the, didn't the, the market. Problem, yeah, the problem with Elder Scrolls Online... Yeah, I no, hated ESO when it first came out because yeah. I misunderstood what it was. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 oh, I loved ESO. Uh, still, do. Um, I still do. More so now than originally. But uh, the key issue was the fact that too many people, people had this impression it. of Skyrim with friends. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, plug the mod, by the way. Um, <laughs> which, that is the title, Skyrim with friends. Uh, but that's what people sort of expected, and I think they needed to get ahead of that hype train and stop it early and be like, right, that's not quite what this is going to be, because it's not made by Bethesda Softworks. It wasn't developed by the same people. It's a, it's a Zenimax game. Now, obviously, you had a couple of Bethesda employees that add some input and insight, but in general, that is a completely different game by a completely different studio, by the mother branch. Um, and so it had its own feeling, and it was obviously rooted in being more of an MMO than a co-op Elder Scrolls game. And I think had they been able to get that across early, it may have had a better launch. Mm. Um, because too many people jumped on and was like, what is this rubbish? This is not Skyrim with my friends. Like, it's just... Not uh, just and... that. There was the whole pricing issue. So, like, you the pro- buy, yeah. buy the game and then buy a subscription. Yeah, they, they, is... tried, they tried the, the WoW model. Yeah, yeah, I called it it would go free-to-play right from the get-go. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Everything is more or less going free-to-play at the moment, except for WoW. Well, it's, it's a difficult one, because you had the... Um, Star Wars, The Old Republic, that went free to play after going subscription. Um, you've had that, you've got uh, a whole bunch of different other MMOs, like uh, Guild Wars, I believe that's free to play. That I don't think that was a subscription first, I've never played the game. but uh, was That like... was always buy to play. Once you bought it, right. you had yeah, it. Yeah. So there's, they've... I think that model just works. A lot better yeah, for it's, MMOs. It's, yeah, it's there's very few games that can hold up the subscription. I believe Final Fantasy fourteen um also holds a subscription. Uh like WoW. And mm. it's probably one of the only only notable uh sort of That game has like a mad cult following though. Yeah. It's, like, it's uh one of the few games that holds up with that subscription based model and is successfully able to keep it other than WoW. It's a very hard thing to do in this yeah. day and age at the moment. I mean, if you don't, if you're not giving people, people so hypercritical and always well, want yeah. to use so of course, and uh, everybody wants everything for a, a lower price. They want better things that will cost them less, which makes it makes a lot of sense. But um, I like the option to add more to the game. For, yeah, for for you personally, in in the case of, we do have a subscription service if you want to use it, but you don't have to to play the game. But here's the benefits yeah. that you get. So yeah, like ESO's current premium service thing is, uh, although there are some things about it that's a bit like, oh, see, I, I think that should just be a standard thing, like the materials bag and stuff. The craft, yes, the fucking craft bag. I think it's a like, uh, god. But I do think that uh, the way that ESO handles it is very good because of the fact that you have, for as long as you have your subscription, you do have access to all of the minor DLCs. Mm-hmm. Um, not the full-blown expansions, but you know things like the Dark Brotherhood and the Thieves Guild and stuff like that. So it's like I'm pretty sure you get the full-on expansions. Do you? I think so. Yeah. Well, fair enough. I wasn't. I wasn't sure. I didn't think you I had think... access to things like Merkmire and stuff by. Uh, Holding I a subscription. I think WoW is the only game that doesn't give you it. You have to buy the okay. expansion separately. Because I know that um, Star Wars The Old Republic, if you're a subscriber on that, you get access to all the DLC. Which, actually, one of their DLC packages won um, Expansion of the Year a couple of years ago. And I remember playing it. It was really enjoyable. The story was really good for it. Um, but But, yeah, that... That model seems to be the way to go at the moment. The kind of either the cosmetic loot boxes or the uh, subscription. You gain everything, but you don't have to subscribe to own the game. And 
the options to buy the expansions if you don't want to subscribe, all that kind of jazz. Yeah. I think that some of them are a better model, and the the WoW model... I th after Battle for Azeroth, I think the community is very upset, and a lot of people stopped playing um, at that point. I didn't have any problem with seeing other players when I was playing Battle of Azeroth. Battle for Azeroth, sorry. But, yeah, the... I'm not sure if the whole subscription and then buy an expansion and carry on with your subscription payment method is really going to hold up soon enough. Yeah. And I think it was proven when Elder Scrolls went to that kind of service that they actually made a lot more money than they were probably expecting. Yeah. And had anticipated, which was... Makes a lot of sense. You give people the option, but people still play the game anyway. It entices people. It's oh, I've been playing this for so long. I now I now want to have the expansions, or I want to have these cool new um, offers that I'm getting, or you know I want to be able to do this, which only subscribers do. It, it gets people enjoying the game, then gets them to subscribe. I mean, it's it's a fantastic method. It's what I'm currently doing with Star Citizen. I uh, yeah, I'm a sub subscriber on that. And the benefits you get as a subscriber on Star Citizen are really good, actually. So you get each month they give you a free ship that you can fly around, but they'll take that away from you and give you another one. They'll also give you uh, currency to rent ships in um, some of their other modes. Uh, you also get access to a lot of their information that they're, you know, currently what they're working on. Um, and all of that kind of info, you get access to more things on the store and they give you free stuff every now and again as well so with star citizens most recent um expo that they did in game after their convention they gave subscribers like the t-shirts that you could buy in the game at the time they gave you them yeah. in the game so now i've got those t-shirts forever in game which... oh nice which is really, really kind of cool how they've managed to do it and and all of that kind of stuff. They, I've I've been really surprised with Star Citizen. I've I've really enjoyed it since I started playing it back in August. Yeah, the game has really started improving. Yeah, it's actually a game now. Hmm. So that there's is... actually a game now. Yeah. <laughs> um, definitely. I think their new structure that they're doing to release updates is really it, it, it's massive so they, they now have repositioned their teams to work on certain patches and once a patch is completed you'll work on a patch that will be planned for release in three to four months time that's three to four months sorry three to four quarters time but the updates that they're bringing actually bring new content or new technology that improves the game it's not just oh here you go here's a small improvement over the last two, three patches, they've added stuff like mining in. They've added a new planet. They've added um, server-side object container streaming, which makes the whole game just so much smoother and you know less intensive on CPU usage. It's it's just better in every way. They've been adding more ships. They've been releasing more information about you know what's to come and what the game's looking like and. You know they're they're very open and honest about their development path. I mean, yeah. off of CitizenCon, because I watched I watched all of CitizenCon pretty much, um, and I loved every second of watching it. They showed how we're going to be able to move from one star system to another through a gateway in the which opens up a wormhole. But instead of you just traveling through the wormhole, you've actually got to maneuver through the wormhole. It's like a big rapids. So if you accidentally fall out of the wormhole, you're just in the middle of space. Oh, nice. And it's it's that kind of thing, the, the thought that's going into that game, that just makes me love it. And the fact that you've got all these options to become a subscriber, then if you pay a certain amount of money, then you become a concierge where you get, um, every time you hit a particular level, you get certain items for free. Granted, they're expensive to get into them, um, so I wouldn't advise anybody do it unless they really, really, really want to, because it's not cheap, but <laughs> <laughs> he says spending way too much money on a game that's not even you... been released in the <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, yep, because you're a whale. I am a whale. <laughs> but it is really enjoyable. Um, and, you know, the gu- a group of people I play with in the organization also make that game really enjoyable. And it's, it's, it's one of those. It's, you know, it's a great yeah. game. It's definitely a game you need to play with people. But yes. the content in it now, compared to how it was two, three years ago, is incredible. They've just absolutely leapt forward, which I've, is fantastic. I, I mean, I've been, I've had the game package since 2014. And back then, the only thing you could do is walk around a hangar and get in a ship. Yeah. So I remember that. It wasn't... <laughs> You know, it wasn't even close to anything. You could just about fly, and and now you can trade, you can mine, you can you know shoot weapons. It's yeah, it's a great game, and I can't wait to see where it's going to be in a year's time. I can't wait for February when I get a Carrick, actually, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, when you <laughs> finally, finally get that glorious Carrick. Yeah. For anybody, that's... if you yeah, are before it gets delayed again. Yeah, well, it will definitely get delayed. No, my luck. Anyone that's actually watching the video, if you have a look on the right-hand side of the screen where my name is, right under it is Give Me Carrick. <laughs> and that has been like that for a couple of weeks now because I just want the Carrick. Yep. That's all I want is just the Carrick. And it's really frustrating that they showed it at Citizen Con because I was just like, oh my God, that is amazing. And then they delayed it. They're like, yeah, it's coming out February next year. No. Why did you do this? I can't believe you've done this. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, it upset me. So, here's an interesting topic. What is your opinions on the new Xbox design that they revealed at the Game Awards? Lichi, I'll, I'll let you go first. I mean, I think it's fine. I, I, I don't dislike it. Um, it doesn't look like a console lift. You know, a console has a specific view than it should be, you know? Yeah. But, you know, definitely a change from uh, the uh, video player that the uh, Xbox One was. Oh, yeah, the uh, very old VHS. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say that I love the look of the, de- the, z- the design. Yeah. I really, I'm, uh, really I'm, like I'm rather it. fond of it. It's... I, I'm a fan of uh, like simplistic uh, design. I don't yeah. like things too over the top, in your face, and intricate. I, I don't think it has enough RGB, to be honest. Oh, you sickened me. It definitely <laughs> needs more rainbow colours. But uh, yeah, no, I, I I really like it. But the the key thing for me is it's a very clever design because they vowed that it will not be louder than the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Um, while the being result can't be louder than the PS4. Uh, yeah, exactly. Wow, but I mean, like, they vowed like they can't have it louder. They refuse to let it be louder than the Xbox One, but it's also so much more powerful. Mm. And so the clever thing with the design is it only has one fan. However, because of the fact that it's this little tower, that one fan can suck the heat away from all the components. Whereas in the traditional sort of console design, uh, you've got your fan dir- situated um, normally over the sort of GPU and CPU, but you do still have other aspects of the consoles that, although don't quite give out as much heat and are as necessary to to cool, they do still get a bit warm, and they're not positioned very well for distributing that heat. So you tend to have these little sort of airflow sort of tubing designs with mini fans and it try and help push the hot air over to where the exhaust fans are but with but with this design it it just needs this one singular high quality fan to just disperse all heat from the entire console all at once it's uh the design i i i personally think that the design has came about because airflow yeah. uh, was what they were thinking about. I think it was the, the design team were focusing so much on airflow that they came up with this design because it worked so well. 
Yeah, so, uh, absolutely. I think I think when you have a look online and you see um, all the comments being made, there's obviously a clear division on those that do and don't like it. If the yeah. people that yeah, yeah. usually don't like the look of it are only console players, whereas the people who are saying actually it is quite a nice sleek design, um, except for of course exceptions, are PC players as well as console players like yeah i mean we're, we're used to having big fat towers yeah, of course so we, you know <laughs> um, uh, but... we got to compensate for something like... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i love it i think i think microsoft are going down a slippery route though personally yeah, yeah. so with what they've done so playstation of course has got its exclusives and you know that's what brings people to the playstation platform i mean i love the last of us that is yeah. an incredible game you know i haven't played god of war the the newest one but apparently that is an amazing game and everything i've seen of it looks good um you have the uncharted series they were a fantastic set of games as well the playstation have yeah. got incredible exclusives xbox has its good exclusives your halo your forces but the issue is me as a PC and console gamer, I can just now get it on my PC. I don't. Yeah. Ha- there's nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably not. Me. I think that was a very interesting and bold move, I'd say, yeah. by uh, Phil Spencer. Um, because of that issue of there's now going to be a lot less people who are going to be going to Xbox for its exclusives if they are also a PC gamer. Um, and that sort of really hands over a lot of the the PC community over to PlayStation. Because a lot of PC gamers also have a console, and not a lot possess all, like, multiple consoles. A lot of them will get a living room console, just the one, and deal with that. Yeah. And that has really given a lot of PC gamers to stick with the PlayStation. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think it's it's going to impact them too badly um funnily enough so i actually i hate uh exclusives yeah, uh, I, th- I, th- I think industry. yeah I, I think i think there's something that kills the industry um and yeah. that's not just for consoles uh i think that's part of the problem with, like with the, epic whole, games. the epic games thing with the exclusives but then i also never really used to necessarily agree that so many games needed to be Steam exclusives. Uh, I I think you know game games should just be able to be on any platform and and service that developers would like them to be on. Yeah, I mean, now, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly lot, okay with having multiple launches open. Yeah, a, a lot a lot of developers will choose Steam for obvious reasons. It's convenient. It's a very good service to spread awareness of your game and and get sales. But uh, yeah, I think I think the idea of exclusive content is not something that necessarily sits right with everyone and uh, I, I don't personally agree I, I think that for example going back to halo halo has handled it uh, quite well because yes it is on steam and there's a lot of people that will have got it on steam in fact the majority of people will have probably got it on steam but it's also on the microsoft store but the key advantage there being that it's also on the game pass and so there's options. I mean, it's it's on Xbox. You can go and buy the you can go and buy the game for your Xbox, or you can have the Xbox Game Pass, or you can go buy it on Steam, or you can buy it on the Microsoft Store, or you can have the PC Game Pass. You know, that's that's five different options to be able to play that game, um, which is just that's it's good for the it's good for the industry. That's going to bring in a lot of people. And the reason I don't think that this whole a lot of their exclusives going to PC is going to affect them too much is I feel like that's only going to affect the population, the PC community that would buy a console. I think those who only play consoles are still going to choose the console that most interests them based on exclusives because they don't have that PC option. And there is a massive, massive community of people who do not play on PC. And so all of that community is still going to be moving, is still going to stick with Xbox if they are an Xbox fan or PlayStation if they're a PlayStation fan or 
some people who bounce back and forth depending on what interests them in the current generation are going to go with the one that interests them. I think the only thing that Phil Spencer has done is widen the community, uh, which I think is great. That's a good take on it. Uh, I think only time will tell with that one. We'll have to wait yes. to see what the sales are going to be like. And uh, let's face it, Sony need to now pick up for their next PlayStation release now that Xbox is released there. So it's going to be an interesting year, I think, for gaming. I think the issue that we're going to run into now is most developers are going to be waiting for that next generation. So in terms of game releases, I can't see anything being major or anything being announced. But we come um, the major conventions, I reckon we're going to have a lot of, oh, this game's going to be coming with the new consoles. Yeah, or this I, think, I think E3 this, uh, well, I say E3 this, E3 next year, mm-hmm. technically, you know, um, it's going to be a very interesting one. I find yeah. you always end up with a very interesting E3 when it's the one before the console releases. Yeah. Because obviously you do get the console events, you get a lot more about the consoles. Um, let's hope my Microsoft don't completely trip over their feet this time around like they did with the <laughs> Xbox One. They had to do a hell of a lot of backpedaling with the last generation release. Um, I feel... You can watch your TV and sometimes play games. Yeah, you know, let's let's focus so much on TV and just basically whisper the word <laughs> games in the background. And PS... Wasn't well, that when that other pleb was running Xbox, though? Uh, yeah, I think... Yeah, uh, or whatever. Yeah, Phil, <laughs> the guy Phil, ruined DA. <laughs> Phil Spencer, I think, is uh, not a, as much of a fool. Uh, I think he's yeah. going to really push the gaming side of it. But uh, it, it's going to be really interesting because you get the console announcements and along with the console announcements you tend to get release title announcements tied into those events you know here's a big game that is releasing with the console something you can play day one because no one wants to buy a console with no games on it so you obviously get plenty of release title games and then you'll have all the major studios who have been developing their games for this next generation you know like your your bethesda's and your Ubisofts and and things like that, your EA coming out like, you know, ah, here's all the things we've been working on, all of the stuff that's... Because everybody, all the major developers, for the most part anyway, they really like to be to get in there early with the console releases. They like to get at least a game out. Yeah, yeah, they like to get at least a game out very early in the life cycle of the game, whether whether it be a day one release or within the first few months but obviously because the consoles released just before christmas it's a perfect time for game developers to you know there's not a lot of major game developers like activision uh, like, like publishers and stuff like activision that want to release a game in february like <laughs> if you can release your game in october then you're pushing to release your game in october yeah of course and obviously that's the like that whole kind of September, October, November, they are yeah. the months for gaming. Let's and face like, it, all the, the big new consoles, are yeah, the new consoles are 100%. I mean, they've already said for the Xbox holiday 2020, but what that means is it's coming out late September or early October because they like to release well within time for Christmas. Um, and so all the, all the game releases, the key game releases around that time are probably going to be, you know, mid-October to to late November will be the key sort of time frame where you'll see all of these major t- titles and stuff like that. Hmm. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, uh, for example, bringing Bethesda back up with Starfield as to whether Starfield is going to make make a 2020 release. Will Starfield release as an early, con- uh, like next generation, title? Because uh, it's been in development for a fair a fair while now, but we're still yet to get well any information on the game. And we've got a, a, a mini trailer, and hey, it's a sci-fi game. <laughs> right. right, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. That really uh, really tells me what I want to know. Um, <laughs> But at this point, it, it, we could be looking at information on Starfield in E3, and we could hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, likely be looking at a 
very close to console release kind of uh, title window. I was happy to do it. Usually, yeah. Yeah, about E3. Oh, oh this game's going to come out in three months. Well, yeah, well, they... Um, by the way, I say I'm, Todd Howard has uh, said in the past that he he hates making people wait uh, yeah. after an announcement. He doesn't like announcing something unless it's within four months of release. Which is uh, if he, 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 he much, but he, he's always turned around and said, if he could announce something and release it day one, like that day, like they did with um, Fallout Shelter, to be fair. Um, which was a great game. Which was a great game. Uh, he'd do that all the time. But at the end of the day, you do have publisher sort of limitations. Yeah. He, he was told in the past, he was like, we can't quite do that. We, 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 you know, you've got, you got to build up your uh, marketing window. But uh, you said in the past that when they've said, you know, what well, kind of uh, sort of window do you want after release after announcing it to release and he says every time short as you can give me like Which is as fair. short as i'm allowed to have because he'd much rather announce a game and be like and you can have this very soon so it kind of makes sense maybe to get a bit more information maybe not necessarily all the information but a fair amount more of the information in e3 and uh then we could look at a just before Christmas release. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at the 20, 2011 E3. Bethesda yeah. pretty much owned that entire E3 conference with a, hey, guys, here's the new Elder Scrolls game. Here's the fantastic trailer for it. Here's a bit of gameplay for you. Guess what? It's out in about three months. It's like, yep. what? <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> Everybody yeah. lost it. Um, so... So yeah, that's a. Uh... I love that kind of approach. Um, I love yeah. Todd Howard for those kind of approaches. But you know, we've only we've just got to wait and see till we three now and see what yeah, um, what comes just, up uh, for him. Just a, uh, just a reminder, you you have bought Skyrim this year, right? Not this year, no. <laughs> not not this year. Not this year, no. <laughs> you better buy it within the next couple of weeks. Todd will be knocking at your door. <laughs> we all know you need your yearly but um, Skyrim purchase. No, I don't need it at all. I've already bought it about five times. Granted, I still don't have it on the Switch, but I'm not getting it on the Switch. It's <laughs> not happening. You've um, only bought it five times. I know. How dare I? Xbox 360, uh, Xbox not... One twice, uh, PC. And... Why did you buy it twice on Xbox One? Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Th I don't think it was twice. Actually, I forget think... that you owned it. <laughs> what did I? Did I buy it twice on that? I can't remember. I can't remember anymore. I probably have somewhere. Oh no, I didn't buy it twice. Um, I bought the original one, but I didn't have the DLC packages, so I had to buy the um, the other edition. You know, the new one that the oh yeah, and, and yeah, because it usually ends up cheaper to just buy the game with a with the DLCs yes. than it is to just buy the DLCs. Well, it was their whole package that they bought. I can't remember what it was, but they completely, um, like, oh, what did they do to it? Because it wasn't oh, just... the um, Enhanced Edition? Thank you. God, that was eating away yeah. from me then. <laughs> so, so here's, yeah, here's a question. You do own a Nintendo Switch, right? Yes. You do not currently possess Skyrim on the Nintendo Switch? No. Well, there you go. There's your 2019 purchase. <laughs> no. Skyrim, Skyrim is not <laughs> right now. No, I've played too much of Skyrim. It is a fantastic game, but let's face it. I think it's over. It just works. <laughs> wow, that's two very different opinions. That's still my, one of my favourite games of all time. It was my favourite game of all time until Red Dead Redemption 2 came out. Red Dead 2, so good. It's yeah. amazing. But... Before we go on about anything else, I need to ask your guys' opinion on no. a game that's been out for a couple of, I'm going to say weeks now, that I've recently got and I'm in absolute love with. I love the game so, so much. Um, what do you guys think of Star Wars The Fallen Order? I haven't played it. I haven't played you, it. You've not... Garbage Star Wars game. Oh, okay. Neither of you have played it. Nope. Okay. My brother has. My brother liked it. 
Um, but that's not saying much, really. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I really I'm I've, really, I have really enjoying been, it. I have been very interested in in it. Um, I've been playing uh, Battlefront Two actually. That yeah, so I um, they could have just abandoned that game. Yeah, they they didn't abandon it. I was flicking through YouTube and I was watching Game Ranks. Um, is it Game Ranks? Might have been yeah. I'm going to be really disappointed if I've got it wrong. Uh, game ranks. Yeah, probably game ranks. It probably uh, is. They, they, they do like the before you buy. Yeah, and... thank you. You've yeah. confirmed it. It was, yeah. So yeah. game ranks. So Falcon, game ranks. Falcon did a whole piece on Star Wars Battlefront 2 literally within the last couple of days. Saying yeah, I, how... think I, I think I linked it in here, actually. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, about, I how it, yeah, about how it's changed yeah. since release. So I'm interested. Is it, is it to... worth it now in 2019? I'm I'm used to, used to. I want to try it out again to see how it was. Because let's face it, that game looked stunning. For, oh yeah, still for, does it. Phenomenally yeah. looking game. It it would have been an incredible game if not for its pay to win loot box structure, which EA love. Yeah, they done goofed there. Yeah, they they really messed up. But I I think the whole thing for me is anybody who plays FIFA. Is already used to that system, this pay-to-win system. Yeah. Yeah. Which is. And you're a big FIFA. Yeah, I'm a noob. So huge FIFA whale fool. Yeah. Um, I love it FIFA. Is primary flaw. And I hate it. It's <laughs> it's purely an addiction piece. I have to play the game. I have to buy the packs. I have to cry in the corner. I have to rage and have a strop every time something doesn't go my way and blame it on somebody else it's <laughs> it's the classic fifa way uh but, but yeah so i remember playing star wars battlefront 2 for the first time and i was so excited because like the game just is gorgeous it just looks so good i was like this is amazing and then i'm sitting there shooting people they've got higher damage because of cards on their weapons they've got higher um, damage on their grenades they've got more health because they've opened 20 million packs and they've just been given those upgrades that you either buy through loot boxes and getting your like whatever the credit piece was or whatever or just grinding hard out of the game really really hard and what's the one thing you want to do in a star wars game you want to be a jedi or you want to be a Sith yep. Lord. You want to swing your lightsaber about. Oh, I get access to two or three Force-sensitive um, characters, but you're going to block the likes of Darth Vader unless I put 40 hours into the game. But <laughs> Precisely. What kind that of was... marketing is that? Darth Vader is one of the best villains of all time. That was a, a very bad move uh, <laughs> in the early days. It, it really, really turned the community heavily against them that was the one and only time i've ever seen a gaming community kind of come together to just slay developers i've never seen that to that scale <laughs> and yeah that's, that's to be fair yeah it was it was incredible to see it was just i couldn't believe it when it was when, uh, it was a very big surprise mechanic <laughs> Yes, very big. Right, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think um, I think that's it for yeah, episode be, one. Been about an hour. So that's uh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. I know. it doesn't that's seem like it. A bit. No, <laughs> at well, all. I mean, we just sat here and spoke shit for a while. <laughs> that's the whole point of the podcast, isn't it? That's why I asked you guys if you wanted to. So, but uh, but yeah, any any. Wise words of wisdom before I stop the recording. Uh, don't do drugs and don't drink and drive. <laughs> and don't use your mobile whilst driving. <laughs> Roost, anything from you? Uh, <laughs> play more games. Cool. <laughs> In the spirit of Christmas, I'd just like to say don't eat yellow snow. Um, <laughs> yep. Sounds about right. And always act surprised no matter what the gift is, I guess. Um but yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, always act like it's the best present you've ever received. Oh my god, thank you for my third dressing gown. <laughs> <laughs> Socks, just what I needed. Mate, I like a new dressing oh, gown every year. Look, Don't at me. 
a new Lynx gift set. I don't have four of these oh, already yeah. this year. <laughs> I hope everyone's prepared for the, the deep, deep smell of Lynx Africa in January. Uh, <laughs> all across Britain. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that is that is just the natural smell of Britain in January. <laughs> yeah. yeah. but <laughs> just, just wake up January 1st and that's it. Just Smacks you in the Africa. face. Just a massive... <laughs> oh, there's Lynx Africa. Jesus. Right, well, anyway, I'm going to stop. Yeah, Merry Christmas <laughs> and good night. Merry Christmas, everyone. See ya. <laughs>